Meet the Playwright is sponsored by Nick Hearn Books, theatre publishers and performing rights agents. I'm here at the Young Vic Theatre in London to meet with Lawrence Boswell, whose adaptation of Beauty and the Beast has proved a popular choice for amateur groups since its original production, which I saw here 15 years ago. Lawrence, it's good to have you here. Now, you're a very successful director with West End credentials, but you've also written a very powerful and popular production of Beauty and the Beast, which was originally produced here at the Young Vic Theatre in 1996 and went on to be revived under your direction at the RSC in Stratford in 2003. So tell us, first of all, what is it about? Uh, it was written for a family audience, so um, it really can be enjoyed by an eight-year-old child, and it could be enjoyed by a 28-year-old mum or 88-year-old granny. It's a really accessible, big-hearted show. It's, it's quite tight. It's got a 50-minute first half and a 45-minute second half. I know that's kind of often important for schools. And it's quite flexible as well in the number of people you need to do it. You can do it with eight people or you can do it with 28 people. You need eight for the core of the family. Um, and when I first did it here at the Young Vic, we did it with those eight people who are the family, Beauty's family, and they all then doubled and became the Beast and the Beast's Palace. What was your inspiration for writing it? As my little daughter, Lottie, who's now 22, but as she was growing up, when she was a young girl, I took her to the theatre, I took her one Christmas to see a production of Postman Pat, and she really didn't enjoy it, and she looked over at me afterwards with kind of disapproval and said, Daddy, is this your work? And I was kind of a bit heartbroken, I thought, oh no, well... I must try and do something for her. So that was the original inspiration, was to do a good show that my daughter could realise that theatre was a great thing. Uh, so I came here to the Young Vic and spoke to the artistic director, and he gave me a pile of books, fairy tales, novels, and I read them through as a bedtime story with Lottie. So I said, now, Lottie, which one do you prefer? And she said, definitely Beauty and the Beast. And I said, why is that? She said, well, because it's got a girl as the central character which you kind of think, well, yeah, that's good, I understand that. And I said, but is there anything more? She said, yes, all the others are about boys fighting. And again, I thought that was a kind of brilliant analysis, really, of Western literature. So I put it on, inspired by Lottie, and then it actually became, because the story is about a father and a daughter, mm. it, it was very useful for me to kind of just use my experience as being a father and, and watching a little girl grow up. That was the inspiration for the show. Tell us how your version of Beauty and the Beast differs from all the other versions out there. When I was writing... The, the story, I, I studied very closely the three French versions from the 18th century and then I discovered that there were at least 15 or 20 versions in different cultures from different parts of history and, and so I studied all these myths and I, for me a, a piece of popular family entertainment really works when it's got songs, when it's got entertainment, when it's got a great story but actually when it's about something, when it has serious and compelling themes that you care about that, 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 that give the drama meaning. I came to th believe that the core of Beauty and the Beast is this experience of being a child and the experience of the security and the, the joy and the pressures of being in a family and having a mum and dad. And then what does it mean to leave? How do you discover yourself? How do you become an independent adult? How do you begin that journey? Well, you leave home. And that's the core. For me, that was the core human activity that was right at the heart of Beauty and the Beast. Groups performing it can also use music composed by Mick Sands. How would you say that music enhances the production? Mick has, is unique in that he's the only person other than me who's been involved in all the different productions of Beauty and the Beast. Um, and he, as both a performer and a composer, so the score is the fruit of five different productions that we've worked on together. It's like a it's like a carpet that runs right the way through every scene and every moment. It brings life to the Paris house where beauty begins her life with classical French music of the 18th century. Uh, and then beauty and her family lose all their money and their wealth and they get thrown out of their posh house and they have to go and live in a shed in the country. And so then we have the French folk music, uh, which is very passionate and earthy. Um, and then we go into the palace. Um, Mick and I decided there we needed to use world music really, it's, it's the music of the sitar, the music of, um, there's a lot of music from the east, it's, it's magical 
music really that comes out of the spiritual traditions of the East because we saw the palace as a great kind of trip into the, into the unconscious. The richness of the music allows you in a way to not have to spend so much time and money on sets. You can actually have a, quite a bare space and the music and the movement of the actors can create those environments for you. The gesture of an actor can create a magical room in the palace. You know, so, so trust the actors and trust the body of the, act, of, of the actors and trust the imagination of the audience. Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.